Um, mm. Do you do you look into like other spiritualities, other systems for inspiration? Is there any, yeah. like anything that's yeah. been helpful? Yeah, so one of the things that's been helpful for me has actually been looking into witchcraft. And so I know when I say really? witchcraft, um, I think my, so fascinating. I think it's like, one, it's not necessarily what people think. <laughs> and also, I think I imagine like 10 years ago and she would have been like, what is going on? <laughs> but basically the premise of witchcraft to, is to understand and follow desire. And so in some ways that's really interesting because it feels kind of the opposite of evangelical Christianity because a lot of evangelical Christianity is saying whether it's like explicit or implicit they're saying that desire is bad that you need to like conquer your desires that you need to like flee from your desires that you need to ignore them and like suppress your right. desires Just, like in general like not even like bad desires of like mur wanting to murder people because obviously you know, no one should follow that desire. But it's like any type of desire, it was kind of basically just like, ignore that kind of just be disconnected from your body, just kind of put that over there. Um, but then the idea of witchcraft is, is in a way like the opposite of saying like, no, like you need to, you need to understand your desires and follow them. And so basically what that means is that you're not necessarily following your first level desire so again if my desire is to like is to like hit my roommate you know it's like punch my roommate in the face the witchcraft wouldn't say like oh go and punch your your roommate in the face it would say like okay that's a desire you have like let's examine that like your desires are information about yourself so you would go down a level deeper and be like okay why is that my desire to punch my roommate in the face and then i'd be like oh, okay i'm angry at my roommate and then you would be like okay why am I angry at my roommate? And it's like, oh, it's because she didn't remember that it was my birthday yesterday. It's like, and like, why is that making me angry? It's because, oh, oh, I feel because, you know, this friend is really important to me and like, I wish she would have acknowledged it. And so you're kind of like following yeah. your desires, like the rabbit trail to like the core desire, um, which in that case, like the core desire would have been to have been like known and, and like celebrated and yeah, and just to be known and like recognized because you know, like my birthday was important to me and, and I would have felt loved, like if that's something you could have like celebrated together. Um, but I think that idea of seeing our desires not as bad and as something to ignore or suppress, but actually seeing them as information has been really helpful and kind of like revolutionary to me uh, because you're basically not saying like, oh, like ignore your, ignore your impulses, ignore your intuition, but it's more of saying like, oh, you feel the way you feel for a reason and that doesn't mean you should necessarily like act on everything you feel, but it is information and it's like coming from a deeper place within you that should be like honored and listened to. And so it's really just a path of like, of trying to understand like yourself and understand your intuition um, versus kind of just ignoring that and kind of following like a list of rules that may not be helpful to you instead. So I've, yeah, so I found that approach to be like very helpful as I've. That's interesting. Yeah, on that honestly, that sounds like psychology. 